We have two experts on local football in our midst. Let's talk to them. Matt Riley is the media officer at Supombury FC and Shami Osman is a journalist with Singapore's new paper. Let's start with Matt. Thailand raced into that 2 nothing lead, didn't they, uh, against Cameroon. What accounted for the dramatic turnaround? Yes, it was, Stephen. Really, it showed a lot of the psychological frailties of Thai football. Um, fantastic start. After 15 minutes, the 1-0 up. Um, but after that, there was an own goal, 32 minutes by Cameroon. Everything seemed to be fine. I'm sure Mr. Roger Miller wouldn't have been very happy with that. Um, but they didn't get to half time. It was 2-0, two, two 15 minutes left, and they let the Cameroonians back. 41 minutes, straight through the heart of the entire defence, and it's 2-1. Now, the fans seemed to think that a draw was in the offing, and they seemed OK about that. But the second half was... Very poor by time. Poor substitutions, uh, less momentum, and uh, they ended up losing the game of the two minutes left. So, disappointing in the overall. You make mention of Roger Miller, and I think the reason you did that is because of his pre game comments. He called Thailand non entities in the footballing world. How did that go down in, in your home country? Yeah, that, that was a, a very strange thing for him to say and clearly he has his own agenda on that um, it dominated the Bangkok Post this morning but by this afternoon the story had really died down I think uh, Mr Miller uh, has a point playing Thailand who are seven places less than a hundred uh, behind Cameroon but to say that it was as to Thailand and non-entities I think is very disrespectful and I think Cameroon are very lucky that they're not touring Thailand because if they were there'd be uh, a percolating effect where the news got through and the Thai people would have been uh, very uh, disappointed, let's say, with those comments. I know Miller doesn't like foreign coaches in the Cameroon. This is one of his uh, agendas. But it was a, an unfortunate thing to say that could have been said in a much more diplomatic way. Sham, it was an unfortunate thing to say. Let's get your views on this because they're clearly the strongest nation in Southeast Asian football. What can they do as a footballing nation to bring themselves beyond ASEAN, though, and, and make an impact on, on wider, on the wider footballing world? Well, I think they've started to make an impact in the wider Asian world. They've, they've done well at the recent Asian Games. They finished fourth there. They showed that they could compete against the likes of, of Jordan, the likes of South Korea. But I think for Thailand to take the next step, what, what they need to do is have a look at their league and not, not the footballing aspect. I think Thai players are well known to be technically gifted, quick, nippy. I think they need to organise the league in, in a much better fashion, more professionally speaking. And when they get the administrative stuff in the league right, then the youngsters will start to come up and, and they'll prosper even further. Sham, let's concentrate on your home nation, Singapore. They faced Thailand last week. They lost 2-0. What conclusions do you draw from that, from a Singapore perspective? Steve, I think it's pretty obvious. Singapore played against a Thailand, well, almost second spring national team, and you still lost 2-0. Singapore still lagging behind. Uh, for Thailand, a strong performance, two very late goals, and really they should be testing themselves more against the Western Asian teams and pushing themselves forward uh, in the future. Matt, Sham, thanks very much for your input. Let's hope we get more action from these emerging Southeast Asian nations in the near future.